after that very interesting and generous 40-minute speech that the Minister has just given, I'll uh, cut my remarks short. Oh, don't tempt me. Don't tempt me. I'll cut my remarks short uh, and perhaps not be as generous as he was in order to allow uh, colleagues, particularly those with constituency interests, here. I'm happy to detain with an upcoming England game if that's really what honourable members want me to uh, want me to do. But in the spirit, in the spirit that the shadow secretary opened the debate, the phrase "it's coming home" doesn't at all stick in my throat. So I think, in terms of this debate, it should be "it ought to be coming home" is what we should stick to. And of course, this debate takes place on the day and against the backdrop of the Prime Minister being at the NATO summit in Europe. And history, Mr Deputy Speaker, has a strange habit of repeating itself, because when the last uh, female Prime Minister was at an important summit in Europe, her backbenchers at that time were concocting a plan to remove her as party leader and as Prime Minister. So I can only assume that the current Prime Minister is hoping history is a bit kinder to her as the summit progresses today. But of course it is shaping up to repeat itself because this has all the hallmarks of Westminster again selling out shipbuilding across the United Kingdom. And the government seems intent to ignore much of what the Shadow Secretary has outlined and much, I'm sure, will be adumbrated by other colleagues as the afternoon progresses, ignoring the real value to the taxpayer, ignoring the craft and the skill of shipbuilders across the UK, and ignoring what is in the interest of our own economic, political and national security interests. And you would have thought, uh, would you not have, that given the department has a black hole of up to £20 billion, that would be something they would want to take real cognizance of. And can I just say, and admittedly I don't level this accusation at either of the ministers on the Treasury bench right now, but in a week where the government has manoeuvred for self-interest all week long, and it is only Wednesday, Mr Deputy Speaker, now would be a good time to switch around, do the right thing, and confirm that the fleet support ships will be built here in the UK. The financial benefits have already been outlined by colleagues out with of this place. The GMB union estimate it can create and secure up to 6,500 jobs, almost 2,000 of those in shipbuilding directly. It can generate almost the best part of £300 million a year for the UK exchequer. And as has been mentioned by the, uh, mentioned by the Shadow Secretary, a return of 36 pence for every single pound that is spent. Mr Deputy Speaker, I grew up in the town of Govan. I know what it's like, represented by my my honourable friend, I know what it's like to grow up in a town that relies on shipbuilding and see it go almost on its knees as it did in the early 1990s. And I'm sure that Glasgow MPs and colleagues from other shipbuilding constituencies will be damned if this government is going to do that again. I will, yes. I agree with Donald Jungen, but isn't it fantastic that there's enough work to keep the Govan shipyards full until the mid 2030s? Oh, I'm going to come to that. Exactly. exactly. He leaps up. Sometimes interventions are best made from your seat, Mr. Deputy (laughs) Speaker. That might have been that might have been one of them. On the question of whether or not this is a civilian ship or a warship, my party is in agreement with the with the opposition spokesperson. We think the government does have the wrong definition and we don't believe it is actually fulfilling its responsibilities as far as the Parker report is concerned. These ships are armed and, as has already been mentioned, they take part in counter-piracy and counter-narcotic missions. Indeed, I want to read a quote from the current procurement uh, minister who said in a written answer on the 27th of April this year, the programme to deliver the Royal Fleet Auxiliary Fleet support ships is in the assessment phase. We expect the ships will be provided with a limited range of weapons and sensors for self-protection, most likely to include small arms and close-range guns such as the phalanx. The exact equipment provision has not yet been finalised, but will remain consistent with the defensive measures provided to RFA vessels. On that very definition, the minister who has just spoken uh, in this debate 
I think, is getting it, is getting it wrong. But, of course, the... Certainly. Minister. Could I invite the Honourable Gentleman to visit a Royal Auxiliary Fleet ship and see the self-defence um, uh, assets that are on board, which is allowed by law, uh, given that they are civilians absolutely working there, they are allowed to have a certain accommodation of capability, which he has just uh, rolled out. That doesn't make them a Royal Naval warship or one that is doing any kinetic operations. Yeah. Well, fact, in fact, I look forward to getting a date and time uh, suggested to do so. But this isn't just me that's picking a fight with them over this. Yeah. It's all of the opposition parties on this side of the chamber today. Yeah. It's actual shipbuilders who will be producing these ships yeah. when the order finally comes through. And it's the trade union movement who support them. I, yeah. I think the Minister has spoken quite a bit. I don't on like to point. not give way to a Minister, but I'd rather give it to a backbencher. Yeah, I thank uh, my uh, honourable friend for giving way. Is, is he aware of uh, recent uh, press releases from the uh, Ministry of Defence in relation to the Mars contract, which the, the Minister had uh, talked about earlier, where it says that the tanker is expected in Falmouth next spring, where she will start military customisation? He makes an important point, uh, which I'm sure he'll, uh, he'll, he'll move further on uh, later in the day. I mean, he's most unkind. I sat and listened to him for 40 minutes. And, I mean, here is me being heckled uh, as though he'd done it in five. So, Mr Deputy uh, Speaker, I'm, I'm trying to remove parts here to allow other colleagues to get in as we, as we move on. But I do just want to come to some of the uh, broken promises that the Conservative Party have made as far as shipbuilding yep. in Scotland uh, goes. Let's cast our minds back four years <laughs> when they were desperate, desperate to buy off Scottish shipbuilding in the face of a potential vote for Scottish independence. Then they promised 13 Types 26 frigates to be built on the Clyde, a state-of-the-art, world-class frigate factory, yep. which amazingly the last Defence Secretary used to stand at that dispatch box and insist was there. And my honourable friend from Glasgow South West was getting phone calls from journalists in Glasgow asking if they could go to see it. Indeed, I believe we have someone from the Labour benches representing Glasgow North East who actually took part in the design of the frigate factory, utterly sold out again by the Conservatives. The current Chancellor, who at that time was the Defence Secretary, repeatedly told people in Scotland that staying in the UK was necessary to secure the future of shipbuilding in Scotland. But, of course, that promise was slashed. The guarantee from 13 to 8, but promised five Type 31 E's to make up for the shortfall in numbers. So, shipbuilders in Scotland and, indeed, I suspect across the UK after this debate finishes today, will not be trusting the Tories any time soon. I want to just read out one final quote, if I might, Mr Deputy Speaker, from the Assistant General Secretary. From the Assistant... No, I won't give way, because I've said I'm going to allow other colleagues to get in. From the Assistant General Secretary of Unite, Mr Steve Turner. And he said this, and he is spot on. It would be a travesty if the UK Government ministers handed economic windfall that building the new fleet solid support ships brings to another country the skills, knowledge and capability to design and build complex warships would be hollowed out and the clock turned back to the 1990s when UK shipbuilding was on its knees. By 2020, 25% of spending on UK defence equipment will be benefiting factories overseas rather than here domestically. This is taxpayers' money that can and should be spent to the benefit of the UK economy. The government needs to back UK defence workers and our manufacturing industries by guaranteeing Royal Navy ships. If 25% of defence equipment spending being spent elsewhere around the world is this government's idea of a global Britain, then frankly, count me out. Yeah.